Hello Pisces. It is time to do your Sassy Singles reading for July. So I'm going to pull three cards that represent you coming into the month of July. And then I'm going to pull five sets of cards that are possible interactions, potential interactions that you will have with someone through the course, or more than one someone, um, through the month of July. So what I mean by sassy single is somebody who is okay being single, they're all right with it, um, maybe having a good time, maybe having a not so good time being single, but they're okay with it. And uh, But they're also open to romance should it show up in their lives. You might be seeking it, you might not be seeking it, but you are in a state of openness to, to really meet people wherever they're at. If they're coming at you without romance or if they're coming at you with, you, you're ready for it. Uh, but you're, you're not willing to do much compromising. So that's kind of the idea of being a sassy single. You feel free to sass anybody who doesn't strike you the right way because you're not invested in ending your singleness. So you coming into the month of July, we have the Page of Cups, the Eight of Cups, and the Six of Wands. So I don't know what the Page of Cups... I think this is a hopeful energy, but it's hopeful about some kind of journey that you're taking that you will end up with victory or celebration. And so I feel like you're hopeful or optimistic that some move that you're making will get you accolades or recognition. I don't think this has to do with love necessarily. The Eight of Cups for me is a card of soul searching. It can be a card of going on a trip. It's usually a solitary trip. Or there could be other people around, but it's not like you're bringing anybody along that is familiar to you. Uh, but you could be. But the Six of Wands is definitely a card of wanting to be celebrated or being celebrated. So this could even be a work-related trip where you realize that you're going to be recognized for something that you have accomplished. So it's an interesting background in which other people could potentially be met. So let's see what turns up. You have the Knight of Wands. So this is a fiery person, can be very impressive and talkative upon first meeting often so high energy that they're in and out very quickly. So that is showing up as you, that you are in that state of mind. You're rushing around excitedly. And that makes somebody feel left out with this Four of Cups. That makes somebody, so your success or the, your your movement forward that is part of the way you're entering the month and your preparation for that. That's what I take this Knight of Wands to be, your preparation for that or your running around associated with that. Puts somebody so out of joint, makes them feel neglected such that when you offer something, they're like, oh no, no, not me. I'm not significant enough for you now. So kind of pouty energy. So let's see how the month progresses. The Hanged Man. So this is the opposite energy of this Knight of Wands. This is you um, kind of divorcing yourself from 
the world for a little bit, like going into deep meditation. You watch things pass you by, but you are not involved in them. And I believe that this is your choice. You're needing, after this busy time, this running around, you're needing to center yourself and you realize that. So you kind of peace out for a little bit. And then there's potential here with uh, for a temperance reaction from somebody. And my feeling here is some nurturing. It's almost like because you are going into a period of seclusion, and I don't think it's a long period of seclusion. It could just be an evening or something. But somehow this prompts someone to say, "Let me bring you, um, let me bring you a nice wine. Let me bring you a nice wine for your solitary time." And this is this is. It comes from a sweet place, but I think it's also a tactic by this person to make sure that you don't forget about them and you've got something there to remind you of them <laughs> and to let you know that they're there whenever you decide to come out. But they want to be supportive in any case, but there's some strategy also involved in this, I think. The, um, the temperance is a, a toe in the water card that's commonly part of the depiction, the picture on the card. And so this person, even though you are piecing out, wants to keep a toe in your water after a fashion. Okay, Queen of Cups. This is where you are opening up. And then the death card, which I don't take the death card in this situation as a negative. This is more somebody who's going to stop everything, put a death to everything. The minute they know that you're no longer busy, you're no longer recovering from being busy, and you have opened up your sweet Pisces energy. See, look at that in that Queen of Cups. It's a bunch of fish. If my camera will focus. And whenever it focuses, I end up moving it, and then it has to refocus. Okay, there. Can you see all those fish? They are in, inside her. So yes, when you go into your sweet Pisces energy, openness, willing to go with the flow, not afraid of the depths. This person goes into death death mode, which is, you know, death is also about clearing the deck. Everything is off. Everything goes. You know, it doesn't matter if the thing is good, if the thing is, is righteous, if the, you know, it doesn't matter. Everything goes. Everything is out. So it's almost like when you become when you get back to your Pisces energy, your giving nature, your go with the flow nature, um, the death, the, the person who is represented here by the death card wipes the slate clean. It's like, I don't care what's on my work schedule. I don't care what I had <laughs> on. They're stopping everything in order to like go out with you or whatever, whatever you, you call the shots and this person will make it happen. They will clear their schedule. Everything will, will go when you, once you reach this point. Oh, and then the Knight of Cups. So that's sweet energy too. This continues to be you. So this is you um, going into Knight of Cups, which is that you are more interested in actively seeking romance. Um, you could also be sharing your ideals um, in general. 
your romantic self, um, your ideas about, um, you know, how you want your life to go in terms of romance. It's, it's being, not just being you, but being you seeking love. Wheel of Fortune. So here this person is clearing the deck no matter what. And here we're with the Wheel of Fortune, which is waiting for a certain timing. It's like the person was interested in dating you, but when you get serious about it being about seeking love, when you let this person know your ideals and stuff and your timelines and things, they start questioning whether this is the right time for them. When it's, yeah, initially, when you say, you're ready, let's go, they're like, yes, anything. I will clear anything to, to go out with you. And then when you get a little bit more forward or assertive in what you want and what your goals are, this person is, I'm not sure I'm ready for that. I'm not sure that, I, that the timing is right for that. So it's like when you get serious, they hesitate. Then Nine of Wands. That puts you on your guard. And you no longer are going to take them at face value that they really want to be with you. And uh, now they're going to have to prove it to you. And this person, I feel like, becomes very opaque to you. This is the High Priestess. So it looks like, to me, there's kind of a near miss. There's something that ends up, you know, there's rough start here. But this is, um, this is promising. If these two are related, then it goes south. Um, or there's somebody that's not ready for what you want, and that puts you off. And, you know, you being a little bit more challenging and saying, listen, you're going to have to prove it to me now that, that this is what you want. And then that person goes quiet with the high priestess and won't say anything except to very briefly answer any of your questions. They go very opaque. You can't tell what they want, and I'm sure that's the, that's the end of that for you. Um, keep in mind that at any point this could change. Like if this is not related to this, this could develop in its own way. Um, yeah, they don't have to be read exactly and related. They don't have to be read that way. But that's what I have for you, Pisces. I hope you find that um, interesting at any rate in terms of preparing yourself for what could occur during the month of July. And uh, yeah, make the most of whatever does come your way for this month. And I will see you again in August. Take care. Bye-bye.